it's going to happen. <laughs> no, there's my life savings down the drain. <laughs> Stupid Disneyland merch. Oh, shit. I just had to watch that happen. I didn't do anything. I just sat there and watched. <clears throat> you could have really cool. Me. I'm pretty sure there's like a latency there. You would have been too late anyways. How's it going? Welcome to 100X Engineering, the show where we show off our robots and whatever Drew did. Um, <clears throat> Drew, did you do anything? I did nothing. I just watched your robot. You did nothing. You should have <clears throat> done what you talked about. Save it for next time. It'll be appropriate. It's for that. next time. I had, yeah. Technically, I'd never done nothing, so I did a new thing. Technically, I think that's 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 fair. <laughs> Mixing it up, I love it. Yeah, good to be um, back. That's very meta. Yeah. Well, yeah. Welcome to Hundred X Engineering, the show where uh, Drew does nothing sometimes, and Carter drives his robot off his desk onto his cushion chair, thankfully. Um, and where you also happen to learn to be a one, not a one X, not a ten X or eleven X, but one hundred X engineer. Um, we got an exciting topic today. We're going to be talking about interviewing and how awesome algorithm-based questions are. Drew, did I tell you I'm an information systems major, not a CS major? Did you know that? I did not know that. Uh, what you is have that? like random like annals of knowledge about like me that I'm not sure which ones you like remember and don't remember, but you have a long memory. Kind of like an elephant. So there's a there's uh, a I'll take that as a compliment. But it is it was I meant to be that. Yeah. Um so like algorithm-based questions are actually like really an Achilles heel for me. So potential employers who are watching this know that i am not hireable i am <laughs> <laughs> we, need, we need that framed that quote right there uh, well, <laughs> even even with a cs degree i think those questions can be jarring difficult yeah. whatever negative connotation word you want to throw at them i've got somebody i somebody i work with um just like help them like mentor them through their career and they're looking for a job right now and they're like yeah, I've got an interview with like this big company and like I'm brushing up on my algorithms uh, to like do it. And that's like all they've been doing for like three weeks now. I'm like, there's other things you could be learning that would be more valuable. I can promise you that. But maybe I'll- That you will like, actually use in your job. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll chat about that today. Maybe that's a good thing to learn about. Uh, for those, for our 2.4 million guests that are watching, guests, 2.4 million friends that are watching. Friends. Um, viewers. Friends. Uh, <laughs> Feel free to weigh in on the comment section on this. Um, or if you're watching this in the future, we're going to time travel here a bit. If you're watching this and the date is not January 24th, 2023, and you're watching it recorded later, leave a comment in the comment section or whatever it is on LinkedIn. Um, episode 20, how do you want to celebrate? Oh, shoot. I didn't realize that was this episode. I don't know. That's this I'm episode. I'm not prepared. We need some, oh, gosh, I need fireworks or a party popper or something. Damn, Where's the confetti? Where are yeah. the balloons? Confetti. Kind of messed up. Tyler, make confetti appear on the screen now. I don't know if our quick, <laughs> quick, you just whip something <laughs> together, man. Just kidding, <laughs> not do that. Um, That's crazy. Fresh for our We've done this twenty times. I know twenty times. Well, I've done it nineteen. You've done it like eighteen. Yeah. Um, oh yeah, true. <laughs> it's okay. <man. laughs> um, I, uh, oh wait, yeah, there. We go. Um. Yeah, I just think we could celebrate with a game of Rento or Ultimate Chicken Horse or uh, some Draw Phone. Uh, let's see, what were some of the other ones? Tetrio, Reverse Tetris, uh, Three Player Chess. We got a lot of stuff we can celebrate with. What's the duck game? I like the duck one. Uh, Ducklings.io. That was a good yep. one. That one's like not far enough of a throwback, though. Like, that one's like pretty recent. That was like three episodes Fair. ago. Fair. Uh, but yeah, if you think like Draw Phone, that was like episode two. So. Anyways, for those of you that are feeling nostalgic like we are, go back and watch some of our old episodes. Um, but I won't. I, I think that's more banter than we do in most of our episodes. Drew, do you want to intro our guest? Yeah, I'd love to. Uh, we have uh, basically a living legend joining us. Um, I really don't know much about Darius, but I know he has been with Jupiter One for a long time, and he's an amazing engineer, and I'm happy to have a conversation and learn more. So let's welcome Darius. Darius, right. Give a round of applause, everybody, for Darius. Thank you for having me on. <laughs> a lot of kind words. We'll see if I love it. Tell us about yourself. It's, it's, uh, yeah. I was going to say elevator pitch for Darius, but you're not the person that pitches. You're the person that is pitched to. That's what I've heard. Just tell All us right. tell some cool stuff about me. <laughs> yeah, so a little bit about me. I'm a team lead, senior software engineer at J1. Um, I've always really been into programming. Uh, I play games sometimes in my spare time. I'm really good at Crusader Kings. If anyone is interested, I can show you <laughs> Demolish that. Well, game. That note, I asked Darius like last. <laughs> Darius is like the most down to earth person I know. But like we were 
rock climbing for a team activity. I was like, Terry, are you like good at CK3? Because he told me about it. And I was like, oh, I'm good. And it's like oh, the no. most like, <laughs> thing I've heard you ever say. <laughs> yeah, it, that is my one humble brag. I am ridiculously good at Crusaders King. Cru- it wasn't Crusader. even humble. <laughs> it was just a brag. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. No, that's, that's cool, man. Um, how long have you been in Jupiter 1, did you say? So I've been at J1 a little bit over two and a half years, going on three in a few months. Very cool. That, yeah. is, that is wild. There are not I feel ancient, people. and that feels very weird to be ancient when it's only been three years. But right. right. Are. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone you used to work with three years ago is like on different teams or like all your coworkers are different now. Like it's, yeah. Yeah, it's I wild. still tell them I love them occasionally just so they don't forget. But yeah. Oh, man. I don't know if we've gone over that in this I'm one. But happy to keep that alive. Home. Part, yeah. part of the Jupiter One culture is there are specific people who will in calls going, I love, 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 love you. And then you have to disable your camera and go away like that and like leave the call really quick. It has been talked about. I think we talked about that in one of our earlier episodes, specifically with a particular person with the name uh, Austin. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I remember that a lot more a couple of years right. ago. Yeah. Um, I don't hear it as much anymore. I think we've lost something in that, but I'm sure we've gained other things. Probably. <laughs> Yeah. Um, cool. I'm gonna I'm gonna boot up the game really quick. Let's uh, let's get this game on here. We are gonna be playing Smash Cards today. Raise your hand if you played Mario Kart back in the day. Um, also, don't judge me for having ads disabled. Uh, let's get this ready to rock. I'm gonna drop the link in the channel here. Uh, Heck yeah! There's the link. Feel free to join us. Um, come play Smash Cards. USW one four six four six six. Sorry, East Coast people. It's the best day. Um, Smash Cards is essentially a knockoff of Mario Kart Balloon Battle, uh, and that is pretty much all that you need to know to describe it. <laughs> I think Space yeah. Key Fire WSD drives. Um, all right, I'm gonna wait for you guys to join. Uh, while we're waiting for that, though, Drew, do you want to start us off with our first question, or should I start us off since you're trying to connect still? So. Uh, I can do both. Um, so yeah, you mentioned we're going to talk about interviewing in general. Um, I think maybe it'd be a fun way to start as our first note here describes what was y'all's first interview like? Tech interview, I guess we might be more specific. But Darius, you didn't start, you had a couple of jobs before J1, right? Yeah, I had a few before. Your first yeah. one, which one was your first? Yeah, my first interview was kind of interesting. Um, I was trying to intern at this company that I was super interested in that was out here in Utah. And um, I like showed up out of the blue. Like I didn't have like an appointment or anything. I just, I was asking like, what would it take to like, you know, get an internship there? And the guy just like pulls me up. He's like, yeah, let's just do like a mock interview right now. And um, yeah, I asked me like a few programming questions. I did pretty well on those. But it was very interesting. The thing that stood out was that um, he basically started telling me how he wanted to work at Disney. And work for Disney instead of where he was actually working at at the time. Like, and this feels very weird that like I'm trying to like get in here and you're active. You seem like you actively want to leave. And so like, <laughs> Red oh, I don't know how I feel about this, but yeah, that definitely stood out to me. <laughs> pretty funny. Wow, that's pretty. Uh, that's ballsy though to step up and go after that position like that. I mean, that's that's the way to do it, right? When you're first getting started with something. Yeah, yeah. It was, Kudos it was to you. I just love that you got like a surly interviewer for like your first one. <laughs> yeah. I, I would, did that affect the way like you perceived the industry at all? Like based on your first, like did you're like, oh, are all engineers this way or like? Uh, I definitely like knew in my brain all engineers weren't that way, but it definitely had an impact of like, you know what? These are just people, you know, they're, they're not, you know, they're not, there's not a whole lot to them, you know, and uh, uh, everyone kind of. There's not a lot to us. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So funny. Yeah. Definitely brought a level of realism. <laughs> yeah. Did you? Did, okay. So, like your second interview was that with CHG? Was that... So my uh, my second interview was with a company called uh, Willis Towers Watson, and um, they were like pretty popular for hiring people out of my school right after. And uh, theirs was a little a lot more serious. They 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 actually had like more focused questions. No one was trying to actively leave while they were interviewing me. Um, it was it was a very uh, it was like a challenging enough interview, but I think they kind of understood that I was like graduating out of school. So it wasn't like, you know, they weren't asking me to build microservices or right. like map out something like that. So it was a lot more detailed. So I liked it a lot. Definitely. What was yours? 
my first tech interview, which was also right after college, was not much of an interview. It was kind of almost uh, nepotistic, if that's a word. I started working for my girlfriend at the time's uh, mother had an accounting firm and they desperately needed someone with any technical expertise to help them implement a new ERP they were, I guess, had purchased. Um, yeah, and I knew nothing about it, but I was decent with computers with my fresh CS degree and hopped on the opportunity with very minimal interviewing um, and just kind of ran with that. So very, uh, yeah, I got the job because I was dating a person. That's sweet. I mean, that works. <laughs> I mean, we, we still honest about it. Like, interviewed with like a non-lover or former lover. <laughs> Um, so it was pretty, what? I just nuked you. I, I know, I, I actually have to pause because I've died three times in a row to you and this is too hard to talk. I mean, I'm getting frustrated. Really um, so my first legit interview was a, uh, was right after that and it was pretty typical. It was no like algorithmic based questions, but there were definitely some like CS related questions and wasn't terribly daunting because similar to Darius, they knew I didn't really know that much. So it was just making sure I had some competency. I don't know. It's kind of actually hard to remember at this point. I'm trying to think of mine. I, I, so mine was, I interviewed to be an intern. I, it's actually really awkward. I was, um, oh, I was smashed by Darius Rockets. Well done, Darius. Ruined his kill streak. Oh. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> that was a long kill streak. Uh, um, I think what mine was so we went to a career fair and like my buddy was super interested in working for this company and I was like I don't care and he was like way more talented than I was at the time and still uh and I he ended up like getting he ended up not getting called back for an interview with them but I did and like the interview was like it was for like a QA engineer position or something like that. But they asked me a bunch of like CSS questions. And I was like, I don't know, guys. I'm sorry. And I was like, I was so uncomfortable. I just remember wanting to like hit the eject button and like trying to like leave. I was like, I'm wasting your time, guys. I'm sorry. Like, this is terrible. And they like kept asking all these things that like I didn't know. And then like they called me back like two days later and like, yeah, we want you to work for us. And I was just like, my first one was just, like, why? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, but yeah, so I started as a QA engineer then, and then uh, it was I actually had like a really successful like time in my career at that company. That was uh, it was like really good for me, and I feel like I was able to provide some value. Um, but it was yeah, they asked me all sorts of stuff that was like now I'm like oh yeah, like I they did ask me to split a binary tree, and they had to like explain what that was to me, and like they asked me to do some stuff with CSS and an American flag, and yeah. Um, which for those of you that have gotten that question in our interview process, yes, I did rip it off from somewhere else. Um, wow. I know. I, 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 think, I think I took credit for it up until now. So it's out. Cat's out of the bag. Um, let's talk about some of the, like, let's talk about some of the, uh, hmm. So we want to talk about what are some of the ones that have made, like, Darius, what are some of like your, what's like your best interview and like what made it like a good interview? Oh man, I think the the best interview was probably the CHG one, um, and it was, I guess, one of my best ones. Yeah, one of the best ones was probably the CHG one, um, just because I feel like I prepared so much for that one. Like I had like looked up their technologies and built like a demo project, and you know, I went in and they were all pretty chill about uh, everything. So it was just a, it was like an easygoing interview on both sides, and then. I felt like I got a chance to like really grill them about what I was looking for. And so it worked out pretty well. Um, so yeah, that was probably one of the better ones. Definitely. Um, what kind of questions did they ask you? Not that I'm asking you to like divulge their interview, uh, their interview process. Maybe, maybe we should say this is for a different company. So we don't accidentally put the cat out of the back for them as well. Yeah, I don't remember like a lot of the exact ones, but a lot of the questions were like pretty focused around like what you be, a really good culture fit um so it was more like you know how have you handled like being angry or like different things like that and so it was uh it was pretty interesting and then like especially the, since i had like the the demo project like they didn't really grill me too much on the programming because they saw from the pro, pro uh, project that 
I could work in their technologies even though I'd never done it before. And so uh, it, was just a, it was a smooth, chill interview. Like there wasn't a whole lot of pressure on uh, either side, I feel like. That's cool. Um, oh, take that. <laughs> I am struggling in this game. I think uh, similarly, my favorite interview was either, it kind of feels like a tie between Jupiter One interview and um, interview I had with Home Depot. And it was pretty much because the interviewers were, I don't know how to put it, but like chill and down to earth and not, not as like nervous or uptight about the whole process as some interviewers can be. Um, which I know is hard because giving interviews is almost as difficult as, you know, getting interviewed a lot of the time, but made me feel comfortable. Line, right. Of like your future <laughs> job. Is, like you have like a, no matter what you come out of the interview having won. If, uh, if you're on the interviewer side, but it's still, yeah. it's not a cakewalk either though. Yeah. And so like the problems themselves were, you know, varied in difficulty. And that was, that was that, but like, the fact that I was comfortable enough to have conversations and talk with everyone involved was what made it like a good experience. I didn't even really remember the questions now that I'm trying to. That's funny. I feel like I can remember like almost every single question that every interviewer has asked me. <laughs> I think I get too nervous and then I just like answer the questions and don't like block it out. <laughs> I was thinking like I usually, I'm usually very nervous in that. In yeah. that spot. So it's like, uh, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> it's been so I, long. I'm nervous as well, but I think my brain categorizes it like trauma so it like <laughs> or I was like never forget this so you never bump into this again yeah meanwhile um, it's not just block it out <laughs> try block the trauma exactly out. yeah it's not worth remembering right that was hard <laughs> yeah i'm trying to think uh one of the better ones honestly like this is gonna sound silly because like jupiter one was actually the best interview i had but like i jupiter one was a weird one because it was like really small when i when I joined, right? It was small when both of you guys joined as well. But I also had like a leg up because like I knew someone here and like had like a pretty good referral from them. I think that actually did give me a lot more confidence like going into it. But just like everyone was like super cool. Even Phil. Uh, I can't say that. I have to show the Phil so everyone knows. Even Phil um, was super cool to interview with my boss at the time. Um, but uh yeah, the things I liked about it, though, like, they had, like, very pragmatic questions. Like, there were specific questions they asked that were not, like, split a binary tree or, like, can you describe, like, how big of notation applies to creating a playlist in Spotify? Um, I just made that up. I think that's a good question, actually. I'm going to roll with that for our next interview. Uh, oh, cool. uh, Eat it, uh, <laughs> what just happened? I'm getting yeah, I think, that was, I, I think the, the, like, the confidence, and it was also because I was, like, further along in my career, so I hear you anymore did carter cut out i think he cut out yeah that's unfortunate carter we can't hear you and your video quality <laughs> diminished oh you're back can you hear me where did yeah. i cut out yeah. uh basically the beginning of whatever that was have i just Could been like darius and i spent some time figuring out if we were the ones lagging out or not and then we decided to speak up about it so it's been a while oh man i'm sorry <laughs> all that to say all that to say uh I think one thing that can make like a difference between like a good interview for like a candidate and a bad interview for a candidate, at least for me, has been whether I've been pursued or I'm the one doing pursuing. So like my interview with Life Omic was like, or Jupiter One was um, somebody reached out to me because I knew somebody that worked here at the time and like I was a referral, but I didn't necessarily want to leave my other job. Like I was happy there, so it's like <laughs> yeah, like if I don't get this, that's not the end of the world. Like it's fine. And I ended up interviewing here. I was like, oh, this is actually sick. But like, I didn't know that going in. So I felt like way more confident. I'm like, yeah, if it's good, if it's great. And if not, it's cool. Well, you That's had a large interviews where it's the opposite. Where... What was that? Have you had interviews where it's the opposite, where you felt like you were kind of having to push and push to feel wanted? Oh, yeah. Oh. That, that'll get into our next one. Of, uh, maybe we want to <laughs> talk like, what are some like the bad interviews we've had? Let's not list places so that we can talk a little bit. <laughs> we'll list the companies. <laughs> um. Yeah, Darius, tell us, tell us about one of your if you if you've had any bad interviews. What are some of the ones? Oh you've man, had? I had one where I I just like it was a stinker. Like I I knew very much before I even like I think it was before I even got to like the second interview. I was like, yeah, I didn't nail this one. But like they had me. It was like part of it was like they made me program a game, 
and it was like within like an hour it was like oh. an hour and 30 minutes or like basically build this game and then it was like a bunch of algorithms questions and was it for it was a like, game company or was it no it was not for a game company <laughs> they did not do any game development but i was like i was like oh man and so like i was like sticking it up the whole time and like i knew i was like yeah i didn't get this job but um it was one of those things of like I like I wanted it in the moment, but like looking back, it's like, man, like those questions were kind of stupid. And like, I don't know if I necessarily like wanted to like be in that job that much. And so right. that was one of the tougher interviews of like, well, how am I doing all this? And that's not even what you guys do. <laughs> and they had you doing this like live, building a game in front of people. Yeah, live. it was like I had like an hour and 30 minutes. They put me in a back room oh, somewhere. Gosh. They left me alone and they were like, all right, program this game. We'll be back soon. <laughs> It's like yeah, I'm actually oh. fascinated by this. Okay, so was it like using like a game engine, or was it like from scratch? Oh, or like, it was like, like in a browser. Pro- they had like a, a browser, browser game, there, but it was like basically built it with like HTML5 and stuff. And I was like, huh. <laughs> that's intense. Like, All right, I guess. It's like Pretty somebody funny. made a hackathon project. They're like, ah, oh, you know, Carter. They spent a ton of time on this. Like Drew spent so much time <clears> on this, but we don't want him to feel bad. So like. How do we use it? Like, I don't know. We could use it for a code challenge, I guess. <laughs> that's that's funny. Yeah, uh, it, was, uh, it was something. <laughs> yeah, it's funny for me not having had to go through that. Like, I hear game. I'm like, oh, that sounds fun. I like games, as evidenced by Smash Arts. Um, having to program one live when it's like that. Is, I doubt you went into that interview expecting to be prepared for like that, right? No. Uh, yeah, I was not even almost prepared for that. <laughs> Yeah. Do you ever have to program any games? I mean, not for an interview and not in front of somebody, thankfully. Um, I think the closest thing to a bad interview I've had was just an interview that was like definitely off target for my skill set. Like, I think I got, um, I was the result of like an overzealous recruiter that put me in front of um, these people who expected me to have a completely different skill set than I did. And I was getting asked questions about like highly distributed systems. I, mind you, I was like a year or two in my career, very junior. Um, and I was getting asked about like Kafka and like distributed databases and uh-huh. high throughput um, distributed systems. And I'm like, I don't know what half those words you just said are. <laughs> um, and it, it was really awkward and it wasn't terribly evident to the interviewers until like the very end that that was the case. And so they were just like thinking I was the dumbest person ever. <laughs> Not that I was just super junior and had no experience. So was that was say, uncomfortable. Like, did you like play it off even like a little bit to where they were like not quite sure? Or, like, <laughs> yeah, I was nervous and I was doing what anyone or a lot of people do in interviews and I was trying to cover, you know, like my inadequacies with what I did know and trying to answer the best I could. Um, but I ended I don't up. I know a lot about Kafka, but have you heard of Material UI? <laughs> <laughs> it's probably <laughs> along those lines. Again, super stressed out. Don't remember much of it, but I remember. Thing like, why was I here? Like, I should not have been here. That's too funny. I mean, yeah, again, I feel bad saying so laughing at your pain. I think my worst Definitely, one was yeah. uh, one where I was like, I was graduating college and I had my internship still, but like they weren't necessarily going to like hire people full time because they were on a hiring freeze. Um, and so I was like, shoot, I need to like go and find somewhere else to like go. So I went and interviewed at this other company like down the road. And it was so bad. Like, it went pretty much how my first interview went, now that I'm realizing it. Maybe like, hey, I'm just not good at interviews. It's like, why did I drive over your mind? <laughs> I gotcha. Um, I'm drooping it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but they just, like, sat me in there. It was, kind of, it was very similar to my first interview, actually, where they just, like, sat me in there for, like, three hours. It was just algorithms back to back to back. And, like, I felt like I, like, did it. But, like, they were just – they are also mean about it, though. Like, they weren't, like, encouraging or, like – helpful they just like clearly didn't want to be talking to me and like i got that vibe or maybe they didn't i just picked up the wrong vibe but i felt very uncomfortable right right out of the game where it's like even if i did well i don't think i would have wanted to work with them actually i probably would have because i needed a job but like i wouldn't have wanted to does that make sense yeah it um, definitely it's definitely bad when you're in one of those positions where it's like i need this but man you're definitely not my uh you're not my first choice if i had another <laughs> Yeah, they, the interview concluded by them saying, you know, have you ever considered a career in product management? 
you might be really good Dang. at that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was like a really tough pill for me to swallow. Like I like I, I didn't respond to that. I, like I was like very demoralized. I was like, do I have to like start the process over? Like, oh yeah, it's a totally different department. Like, you know, different people, different skill set. But like, you know, you might be better at that. Um, but uh, yeah, I that that was like my. Uh, Either if you've read Mistborn, there's like a point in like Mistborn where it's like people accrue their powers and become Mistborn after they snap and like go through like a really intense experience. And I was like, that's when I snapped. I was like, okay, I'm not actually a good engineer right now. And I need to like learn the things that will make me a good engineer. But it was like a really tough pill for me to swallow. But, so I'm well, great. It sounds like the interviewers happened. didn't handle it well either. Like not treating you with respect and, you know, giving you the time of day at the interview. That probably didn't help. I do structure like the way I phone train people and like interview them like after that of like making sure never to make anybody feel that way again. So if you've interviewed yeah. with me and I've done that to you, I apologize if not on purpose. Please tell me in the DMs or the comment section here publicly. <laughs> no, I no I actually, I remember very well our, my interview and that you were like the first part and uh, I very much enjoyed chatting with you. It was fun. Well, thank it was thank nice you. And cool. I'm glad my fishing for compliments actually worked. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, you moved me right in. <laughs> oh Darius, we tied. You still won two games in a row. <laughs> oh. Okay. Let's see. Um okay, if you're interviewing for a company that really wanted to hire, so you're in the like you're in the power seat. Um, what things would you do to interview them back? Like say you've gone through the process and they're like, we want to hire you, or like throughout the process, like what things would you do to see if they're a good fit for you? But like you're clearly like they're wanting you. Does that make sense? Um, yeah um i feel like no matter what like even if they don't want me i feel like i'm still gonna grow them but i would definitely like oh, yeah, ask yeah. questions of like uh you know what is it like what's a day like and i definitely would want to like sit on on meetings and stuff like that i want to know like hey how do you guys deal with like remote workers because i'm kind of at a point where it's like i don't know if i can you know happily go back to being a full-time in the office employee mm -hmm. And so, yeah, like, things like that. And, um, yeah. And I'd want to know things about, like, you know, when's the last time you had a argument with your manager, for example? Or do you feel, you know, confident about, you know, bringing up issues with them? Or different stuff like that. Like, I'd really want to get a feel for the culture if I'm going to be working there. And kind of, like, what are the challenges that you're facing? Like, as much as they can show me before I actually, like, you know, join the company to know what am I looking for and what, uh, what kind of challenges they face. And stuff like that. Those are really good, really good points. I, uh, adding to that, I think a good thing to ask is like what the expectations are for your position. Yeah. Because I think there's a disconnect sometimes between interviewees and interviewers and what that is, or if it's even set, which I feel like is a red flag if you can't get a direct answer for what, like your, I know people frame the question better, but like basically what what you would have to do to perform your role at, you know, a good level or like an acceptable level. And if that can't be answered, that's like, well, <laughs> probably not a good thing. Yeah, I get it, Carter. You killed me. <laughs> Back to me with my one point. Um, uh, that's just giving me So I've had people who've like wanted to pair with people on the team. Um, really not since like being at Jupiter one, I've actually had very few people like make custom requests. Um, Maybe it's because we're just like, so we give them everything they need. So there's no question. Uh, I don't know. But yeah, my last company, I had people who would like come like sit in and like stand ups with us or like come and pair with us or just kind of like talk to the team like throughout the day. This is, I think like the meta of this question is like, what's one thing you could like sit in on that would give you a vibe for like the team's health and what it would be like to work on a team. I propose that stand up would actually, or not stand up, uh, retro. Yeah, that's what I, was, I was thinking retro oh, when you first yeah. said that. <laughs> We would hire yeah. nobody. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think the way, you, especially like the way you run retro on your team, I think we would. Uh, I think that might scare nice. some people, but others would be enthusiastic. So you guys still yeah. do the retro thing. Yeah, we sometimes uh, we do memes instead of sticky notes. It's a cultural thing on Team Prometheus. That's fun. That's cool. What were you gonna say, Terry? I was gonna say that's kind of interesting. I wonder if the team would be on their like best behavior. Like would they? Yeah. <laughs> You know I, mean? um, I remember uh, that reminds me of like one one interview. I can't remember what the company was, but I know they uh, they had it to where like they would basically hire you 
like temporarily for like a few weeks because their whole thing was like you can't hide crazy for like more than a couple of weeks right like if you really aren't going yeah. to work out like it kind of co- it'll come out after even probably a couple of weeks to like you know a few days of like this person's not really gonna work out or whatever. So, oh yeah, it's kind of an interesting uh, thing. But you no, need to I, show up to a few meetings. Is the lesson? <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I think you're right. I feel like people might put on a a facade, maybe is the right word, like a fake, fake attitude, fake appearance. But maybe you can have it where they like the the interviewer he could join in like the background somehow and not be visible. Yeah, I, don't know. Yeah, I feel like if we at least like. Um, yeah, I, I think the retro one, I'm trying to think of like, <laughs> if a team is really, if a team is not in a good spot, uh, or if a team's not happy, they're probably not going to hide that when somebody's trying to interview for the team. Oh, true. Yeah. true. Yeah. My thought on that. Um, smash you with my nuke, man. Uh, I'm, oh yeah, I'm tied for first two okay. guys now. We got Darius with the mines. Yeah, this is a tight game. That's what is out there. Yeah. I guess also if I saw people that were like way too happy in retro, you know what I mean? Like there's like no He's suspicious. Uh, I don't know if I believe you. <laughs> what, how much are they paying you to say this? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Not hey. really or get out of here. <laughs> oh, I thought I could shoot my fun at work. No. Um, okay. Take home exercises. What are what are some of your thoughts on those? Do you think those are good? Do you? Oh, we gotta we gotta. Yeah. Oh, pause. Okay, kill me all you want. Actually, America, let me shoot my wicked Darius since I just told him to pause. That what I missed. Uh, okay, <laughs> this uh, this is this is huge. Okay, we got our first comment from Twitch, Mister Pidakin. Like, congratulations. Yo. Like, your comment number one from Twitch. I didn't realize we've ever had anybody actually watch us on Twitch TV. So, round of applause. It's 2.4 million and one viewer now. Uh, <laughs> we've done it. Uh, Tyler, roll out your credits. No, just kidding. It only took on. 20 episodes. <laughs> <laughs> We're done. Mission accomplished. 100x engineering, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, okay. Take home exercises. Uh, what are your thoughts on take-home exercises? Are they good, bad? What makes a good one? I used to have a, I used to have the opinion of you know give it to someone and they like let them like run with it for like a weekend or something. But I've definitely changed my mind on that because I guess I kind of think of it as like that is a good amount of time someone's spending on it that you're not paying them for. And so I definitely like the idea of like you know it should be completable like within a few hours and really it's just meant to show like hey like what type of technologies do you reach for like are you pretty skilled with whatever technologies that you do you know feel like you can use and just like things like that but not like oh my goodness like you have to rebuild our website type of thing <laughs> in a weekend. It's for us <laughs> i think people do that don't they yeah yeah I, I know a lot of i know the ones that do do like please solve this bug ticket for us or something like they do pay typically they pay them for those ones if they don't then that's just like wrong um, tried to dodge my mind and went straight into my gunfire. Uh, I think the challenge, I think, especially for like junior and mid level positions, it should not take a long time. I think once you get to like senior, then staff and principal, like pay bands are getting high enough and like they're influential enough that like I do think they should take a little more time. Um, but yeah, like but to Darius's you know, point, like you might not be their only take home exercise, which yeah. yeah is difficult because yeah you want to vet your employees but also you don't want to be the eighth take-home exercise they've gotten this week you know yeah i i agree um i've never i've never actually had more than one take-home exercise at a time like i've been fortunate enough to not have to like interview too hard at places uh, or like I don't not know how like, common that is yeah i don't either i'm realizing my perspective on this might be skewed um <laughs> I think though, like, because like we're in the process of like revamping our exercise, right? I've been working on it for like months. Uh, it'll be done by the end of January, I promise. That gives me, I just gave myself a week. Um, Whoops. Yeah, like, I don't know. So, Darius, you said it shouldn't take too long. Like, if it's, you know, say it takes like a couple hours, what would consist of like, what do you think would be a meaningful like take home exercise from either like the candidate perspective or the interviewer perspective? Like, what would you want to see? In that? I think it really depends on the position, right? Because like, if it's a printable or like, you know, 
a high level position architect or something like that, then I think you should really gear it towards that. Like I need you to actually architect something and tell me what will be the best structure and things like that. And so mm -hmm. I don't know if I necessarily like, like, especially once you get to the higher levels, I, I kind of assume if you've been, you know, doing this for a long enough time, you have a, a decent aptitude for code and we can probably do like maybe in-person coding to like double check that. But I would want to know, like, can you actually architect and like build out diagrams and things like that and communicate what you're trying to build very well to me is what I would be looking for personally. I, I like that. I think uh, it's hard, right? Because like a lot of those like things are like a lot of them, like the principle, like architect level, it's very uh, contextual, right? Of, yeah. Like, what, what an architect does at one company might be different from what an architect does at another company. Whereas like general like engineering principles are kind of the same. I mean, maybe it's the same architect stuff. I'm not, I'm not an architect, so I don't know. Um, I will say like I have foregone a challenge with like some of our principal hires just because like what I needed from them was not as much like writing React code and more of like okay yeah. like can you talk to me about how like how to like set up a platform and like how to do these things. So I, I do think like there is like a point where like it is more relevant depending on what your job will consist of mostly. Like are you gonna be mostly writing code? If so, we should probably like look at more of your code for like the interview process. Yeah, um, yeah I guess it kind of depends on what you want them to do. Yeah. Or are you going to be like providing technical leadership? Then that's like a totally different kind of knowledge that you should be vetting. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think uh, it's interesting. Our goal with Jupiter One, um, the code challenge, for those of you that are prospectively interviewing, here's a hint for you. Uh, our current one is focused more on what you being able to like set something up from the ground up. Because at the time when we created that, that's a lot of what we were doing. Um, we still do that on occasion, but like a lot of it now is more of like adding features to an existing app. So we're trying to shift our code challenge to reflect like reality and like, this is what you'll actually be doing. So we're going to set up like a very pared down version of what our current app is. And then, uh, give people some tickets, like some fake like stories to go and implement in it. I'm hoping that'll be good. I, I, I think it'll be a little bit more work, like more than like two hours, like our current one takes. But I think it'll be more meaningful for, for like the candidate to get an idea of like what our code base looks like and what like the, like what Jupyter One does. Like it could be like an education opportunity. I don't know. What are your thoughts on that? I like the perspective of like whenever you can make the interview more like what you're going to work on. That is for the better, right? Because there's no point in me doing like leak code if I'm not going to do anything like that. Right. So, yeah. Like I, yeah, I like that. Do you have any thoughts on code challenges? Any other thoughts? Talking about, uh, yeah, I mean, I generally agree with everything y'all just said. I think if it's applicable and if it's not terribly time consuming or like the appropriate amount of time spent on it for the role, then it makes sense. There's just not a lot you can use to gauge how good of an engineer, how good of an engineer on your particular team someone's going to be. So, I mean, it's kind of the best tool we've got, it seems. Um. Do you think code challenges should replace live coding in an interview? Like, do you think you should? You oh, could definitely not. That's not? something I was thinking about uh, while y'all were talking is that we kind of haven't touched on the point that a code challenge can be, uh, I don't know, you can use the internet and you can, which I don't know if it's a very valid point because we use the internet in our day-to-day -day <laughs> jobs, but like you can get help from outside sources that might not be, then might make the challenge not represent your actual skills. If that makes any sense yeah. cheat um and maybe in a live interview it's a little bit less of that to some extent or it can be like uh, as an interviewer you can kind of gauge around that maybe maybe that's just wishful thinking no i agree i think like yeah we give people like a take-home exercise right and then we review it with them and like if somebody else wrote it for them it'd be very evident mm -hmm. uh right yeah. Also had candidates who have gotten like really upset being like, why are you giving me a take home exercise and having me do live coding? Like take home exercise. Like, don't you just want me to be able to get work done? Uh, what are your thoughts on that? What are your thoughts on it, Darius? <laughs> Flip the question yeah. around twice. <laughs> so, oh, I did have something I wanted to say really quick about the live thing. Um, I, I'm always like back and forth in the live coding example because like there's always a chance that someone has like stage fright you know what i mean oh like, yeah you are yeah. interviewing with people that you don't know for if you really want the job you're like already nervous and so i always have a so hard, hard time like, holding live coding against someone because it's like uh 
Like you don't, and sometimes you can tell when they're nervous, but sometimes you really don't know. Um, yeah. As for the take home, um, that is definitely a hard one because, you know, I definitely feel like you have, there needs to be something as, when, at least when you're at like, especially like the mid level or junior range, like I definitely feel like, okay, like we still want to know, like, can you actually code? Because, you know, we are hiring you in a position of, I need you to basically be an individual contributor. Um, at the same time, I don't know if you can necessarily just say like any principal is just like, you know, gets a free pass. So there needs to be something in place, but definitely, definitely I would tune it to to what that role is. Or maybe you just grow them more and like the actual interview and give them more interviews. Since you're, you're probably trying to figure out like how they're going to fit in with the organization and like drive change and whatnot when you're at the higher levels. Yeah, I was going to say I'm far more interested in the live coding portion for like senior level like senior plus interviewers of like, if you're going to be a senior engineer, there's two things that you need. Like you need to have like excellent, like you need to have like technical depth. Like you need to be an expert. And the other thing is like, you need to be like a force multiplier on your team. Like you need to be able to lift the people around you up and be able to mentor them, help them grow, like pair and collaborate and review like the junior and like mid-level engineers code. And like, if you, like part of doing that is having confidence and being able to like go through an interview. I think like, I, I like to think that like most of the time we try and set our interviews up where like the candidates feel welcome uh, and not nervous. And if they don't, like, that's where our dinosaur question at Jupiter One originated from. That's a topic for another story <laughs> or another 100x engineering, but like trying to just like lighten the mood a little bit. It's hard to get a hard, it's hard to get a good read on somebody. Like, I've hired people on our team who like choked hard on the interview, but their co challenge was like spotless. And it was like they made it very apparent to us. Like, their co challenge was like, uh, maybe I'll rephrase it this way actually. Yeah, their co challenge was great. Like, the way I frame it to candidates is like, there's like bonus requirements on the code challenge you can complete, but like I've hired plenty of people that have done the bare minimum and just like killed it in the interview. Conversely though, like I've hired people who choked in the interview, but like made it very apparent through their code challenge that they're very excited about working with us and very invested in like trying to pursue that. And that has a lot of weight. And like, I haven't yet to have any of those candidates like come back to bite me. Like they've all been great. Mm -hmm. Um, so I do frame it a little bit right now as like, which basket do you want to put your eggs in? Like you can do both and like cover your bets, but like, to your time like if you have like 10 other code challenges you're probably going to not be hurting for like job offers so maybe it only makes sense to spend more of time on it but if you really mm -hmm. want to work here um you know if Jupiter one's a good fit for you then like spend a little more time on it and it'll definitely like help your odds i think of helping us get a good read on whether we'd be a good fit for each other huh. um man we've covered a lot of stuff <laughs> <laughs> yeah i think we're at time now too unfortunately um darius you had to give advice to an up and coming 100x engineer regarding interviewing for a new position what advice would you give them i would definitely always say um the interview is uh, just as much about whether they're going to fit with you as much as it is they're seeing that you know you fit with them so definitely do your due diligence and make sure whatever company you're going for they actually fit with you know your ethos or what you believe in cool. so i think that's the that. words of wisdom from darius right everyone let's give darius a round of applause Darius, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for teaching us how to play Smash Cards and embarrassing part of our work. Yeah, that, that was rough. It's been an yeah, utter yeah. pleasure. And uh, we will chat with you again in the future. Have a good one. Cool. Thanks for having me. See you guys around. Yeah. Bye. One of these days, I want to like wish somebody goodbye and then like not, not kick them off and just have it be super awkward. But it has to be somebody I'm like comfortable like putting in that position. I'd Darius, I like I, I like Darius too much to do that to him. But if I was interviewing you, for example, they're like, goodbye, Drew. Okay, okay. So now oh, we know. <laughs> oh, you're still here. Uh, <laughs> take the hint. <laughs> um, that was a good conversation. I, I like that. I've actually been wanting to chat about interviewing for a while. I, I'm, Darius had some good thoughts on that. Uh, you did as well. I should be It's much more complex than we give it credit. Every time we open up this conversation, it's like there's so many things to consider. But yeah, yeah, that was fun. Yeah. Um, I've got a, I've, I've got kind of a follow on topic for this that I think we're going to chat about on Valentine's Day, which is our next episode. I actually wrote it in on here this time. I'm not for gonna, once, we have the next episode date. I like just to prove it to everyone. Um, here, here we go. <laughs> Check this out. Yeah, it's oh no, no, it's big me. This is not worth it. Yeah, right here. Fourteenth, I wrote it in. I also, this is a weird flex. Also, Carter's birthday Eve. I don't know if the internet should know that. It's private information. Oh well, not um, anymore. Not anymore. I just want everyone to send me birthday presents. All of our two point four million 
followers because I think there's a, there's a real business opportunity there. You know, you can make some yeah, money. Yeah, PO box. You need, you need an actual PO box or something. Monetization. You want all those packages. No, I'll just give them my home address. <laughs> <laughs> what could um, go wrong? They're all fans. Um, <laughs> uh, any other announcements that we can, we can think of? Uh, no. I think we're going to hopefully be getting a brand refresh here soon. Or not a brand refresh, but more of a... Now, the brand will stay the same. Uh, the brand <laughs> will not be changed. But we're uh, looking to hopefully get an intro refresh. We've got Tyler working on some stuff. So maybe I shouldn't publicly say that either because now I'm publicly putting Tyler on the hook. But so if anything happens to Tyler, then we all need to start asking questions. But I think that's it. Uh, Drew, do the streamer voice. I'm not doing the streamer voice. You get that every like 10 episodes. <laughs> you, you know, that's your responsibility. <laughs> tell him he'll do it this time. It didn't work. We'll try it again next week. Yo, yo, yo this is Esto2 and D Stash coming at you um, with another episode of 100X Engineering sponsored by Pidakin on our Twitch stream, uh, hosted by Tyler, who is our favorite person with helping us produce this. Uh, don't forget to tickle the bell and no. <laughs> slap the like. I'm trying to mix it up, man. It's really, okay. Don't forget to destroy the like button. It'll hit like and subscribe. We'll chat with you next week. And let's roll the credits. Now. Yeah.